Welcome to this getting started video on designing sound using the all new wavetable zone in Hellion 6. In other words, we're going to turn this sound and this sound into this. And this. And this. Let's get started by dragging an empty program up into the slot rack. Now let's go over to the program tree, which is where we do all our creating, and we add a layer, and I'm adding a wavetable zone. Select the edit and sound tab to get access to the editors for whatever you have selected in the program tree. There's a wavetable section inside of this editor page, but if we go up to the wavetable tab, it's got its very own editor. Down in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see that sine wave just sitting there. Click on the 2D layer to view the waveform. In the spectrum section, we can start to add our own harmonics. You can zoom in for a closer look and use the pen to choose our harmonics and increase the amplitude. You'll notice that the waveform is changing. Down below the harmonics section, we can also work with phase. The 3D map tab will give us even greater detail to show us exactly what's going on inside this sound. But at the moment, it's only a very basic sine wave that we've just really added some harmonics and made a few changes to the phase. I've selected wavetable and browser from the window set menu. Now on the right hand side, I've got a browser so I can go searching for sounds. This is where the real fun begins. When I find something that I like, I just drag it over and drop it into the sample section. And now we've got a sample and we've got a wave down the bottom. One of the cool things about the wavetable is it automatically extracts the wave. You'll notice a difference in the spectrum and also if we go up to the 3D map, you can see how different this map looks. We can drag the map around by picking up with the mouse and just dragging around the screen. Our 2D map also looks very different. This started out as a sound effect and Hellion 6 has extracted the pitch as well as the wave and turned it into, well at the moment, a mosquito-like sound. But bear with me, we're getting there. I'm holding down Alt with my left hand and I'm inserting markers, which also inserts new waves and crossfades, going in between these different waves in our wavetable. Let's have a look at some of the things you can do with the markers. You can move them around. You can also delete them by once again holding down Alt and getting the eraser. You can move them down the bottom in the envelope section. You can choose to sync these markers up to your project tempo and lock them into a grid. If you click on the fix button, moving a marker won't affect the marker that comes after it. Editing and reshaping a crossfade is really easy. Just use your mouse to pick up on it and move it around. There's looping functionality. So at the moment I'm selecting Alt, which is sending it to the end and then reversing back to the start. I can change the loop points and I can also go up and select loop, which will mean It'll loop back to the start every time it gets to the end. I can choose when the loop will be released. Once legato mode is activated, the entry point for the note will be wherever the cursor is in the wavetable. When it's deactivated, the entry point will be at the start of the wavetable. Select individual waves and right mouse click on them to get a contextual menu to do things like cut, delete, paste, load a new wave. You can even insert a traditional wave at any point into the wavetable, it's easy. Notice there's no sample for that because it's not a sample based wave. Before we go too far, let's pull up and use a real life example of working with the wavetable editor, and that's resynthesis. I've got this one guitar sample, which is assigned to the relevant pitch down on the uh, keyboard below. But if I right mouse click on the sample up in the program tree and say fill gaps, pitch and velocity, instantly it maps that one sample to every note down on my MIDI keyboard or my keyboard down the bottom. So it's pitch stretched, that one sample, and it sounds really good. Now I'm going over and changing to the wave table zone. And that doesn't sound as good, but that's because we need to do a little bit of work. It's automatically extracted the pitch. So it, let's change the pitch sensitivity and get it down to pretty much an even line. Let's change over to exponential and enter 16. Let's normalize it. So you can still see or hear a little bit of 
sort of tremolo going on there. But if I interpolate the phase, it's gone. That is really cool. Now I can go over to the Sound Edit tab and start playing around with the format. I'm amazed at the quality of the length of this sound as I'm holding the notes down. There's absolutely no artifacts. That really is quite special. Let's make things a little more interesting and go back to the browser and find another sound. Once again, when I find something I like, I drag and drop it over. And see, we've retained that wavetable from before. Remember that a wavetable only contains the envelope and spectrum information. I'm starting all over, so I've gone up and reset to four markers, and Hellion has inserted these markers at equal distance. Let's take a quick moment to have a look at the zoom functionality inside the wavetable. In the envelope section, I'm minimizing the view so I can see all of my markers. If I hold down shift, and click on that first button there, I can set a zoom point, which I can go back to instantly. This sounds very different to the sample that I loaded in, but it's still reasonably basic. So I'm changing mode to spectral voiced. And now we can change the speed at which we move through the wavetable. Now it's starting to become a bit more interesting. We can use the threshold sensitivity to decide how many markers are going to be extracted from this sample. Use the zoom controls on the sample section to make sure that you can see the full sample. Let's briefly leave the wavetable editor section for a moment and go over to the zone tab. There's another video in this playlist that shows you how to connect an external MIDI controller up to parameters inside of Hellion. At the moment, I've got this fader set to control the position and the encoder the speed. I'm going to change over to the 3D map in the wavetable section of the editor just zooming in so that I can see it. And now I'm going to turn on loop. Just adjusting the start point. And now I can use the external controls on that visual representation to just feel my way through the wavetable. Visual representation is really important. And I've built my very own window set and I've also set up some custom controls from my external MIDI controller, which allow me to control the four sections of the wavetable. So I'm going down to recall my screen set. And now on the left hand side, I've got my two wavetable editors and to the right, I've got my control sections. See how easy it is to turn them on and off. Now I can solo one of my two main oscillators, my sub or my noise section. Let's go and find another sample and drag it over into the second wavetable section. And I'm going to turn that first oscillator off. Once again, we've just got that one wave. So I'm changing modes and I'm going to introduce more markers to add more waves and crossfades. Now I'm just moving the speed around and once again feeling my way through it. Changing the position. And now I'm going to introduce that first oscillator. So we've got both of our wavetables operating at the same time. I'm moving through this fairly slowly. At the moment we've just got two wavetables, so it's time to add some fairy dust over these wavetables. I'm adding an audio bus, and inside that bus I can house up to eight inserts. I'm going to start by adding a chorus. I mentioned before that the editor tab showed us the editors for whatever we had selected in the program tree. I'm going up to add a new tab and I'm selecting sound editor. Now I can start editing the effects that I've added. And that's fine for now because I can go back and edit it whenever I want to. Now I'm going to turn on the multi oscillator section and this is really cool, but I probably should use a 3D map to show you. So I'll turn it on in both wavetables. You can move it around to make it easier to see. And now as we increase the number of voices, 
our sound starts to become more complex. As I move the spread control around, the oscillators have moved further apart and they've spread out all over the wavetable. Now they're moving in their own space. And I can change the position of all of them. One of the really cool things about Hellion is the amount of ways you can control parameters. I'm going to add a MIDI LFO. Now I need to set up a control for the LFO, so I'm going down to my modulation matrix. And I'm just selecting the LFO. And now I can go down to the wavetable menu and select a wavetable parameter. Just controlling the position. Now I can go into the modulation editor and I can make changes to the waveform in the LFO. The insane thing about this wavetable zone is the lack of artifacts. It's so clear. Let's change this to something like cutoff and see how that will completely change our sound. We need to go to the cutoff editor, turn the filter on. Add an amount, we can also add a curve. Instantly, our sound is completely changed. Let's turn the sub on. Add some noise. And there's a whole menu of different types of noises that we can add or mix into this sound. That's just added a sharp attack, but I don't think there's a whole lot there. I'm soloing it. There it is. So there's a whole variety of different menus that we can use to add context to the wavetables. Some of these rhythmic noises are really cool. Added my sub in, my two oscillators. Now I'm moving over to the envelope section of the editor, where we've got four tabs, amp, filter, pitch, and a user-defined zone. Check this out, I'm going up to the pitch section, I'm going to turn up the envelope amount. Now I go back to my envelope, the pitch tab. And I'm drawing in a pitch envelope. Every part of Hellion works perfectly together. I've never used anything like this before. You can lose yourself for hours in here and you can change your sound in a heartbeat. Let's go back down to the modulation matrix and add an LFO. So I'm not adding an LFO, it was always there. I'm just setting up a path from that LFO to a parameter. In this case, I'm going to use something in the wavetable. So maybe the voice spread. Let's add another LFO or low frequency oscillator. And this time I'm setting it to resonance. change the shape of the wave or the frequency so I'm just going to slow it down a little bit most MIDI controllers on the market these days will have aftertouch so we can even add aftertouch to this modulation matrix to get complete performance control over the sound that we're creating I'm selecting multi-detune so when I press harder on my MIDI keyboard 
it'll detune the oscillators. You can take full advantage of all of the controls on your external MIDI keyboard. So now I've got the modulation wheel controlling the cutoff. Accessing the modulation wheel to change the cutoff has completely changed the performance possibilities for me. And in changing the performance possibilities, of course, it's changing the overall sound that I've created in this wavetable. I'm going to shut up for a little bit here and just play around and see what I can come up with. All I'm doing is changing the level, the position and the speed of my two wavetables. So I can gently move backwards and forwards between the area where the sound is generated, the wavetable zone, and my various editors to further contour and shape the sound. I've got my eight quick controls down the bottom right hand corner of this window set and I can add or assign a parameter to each one of those eight quick controls for this layer by right mouse clicking on a parameter and selecting the quick control. I could easily sit here and do this for hours but we have to finish somewhere so I'm going to go back to my program tree and I'm just going to save this so I can recall it at a later date and continue to edit, maybe even build more layers and add more effects and make the sound even more complex. You can add attributes, by the way, when you're saving it, but for now, I'm just going to name it simply and hit OK. There are plenty more videos like this on the Steinberg VST YouTube channel, so please look us up and subscribe for more information on how you can be more creative with Hellion 6. I'll catch you in one of the other videos.